What's going on guys? I just have a quick video today. I want to finally finish this corner that I've been putting off for months for some reason. I don't really know why. It's not that difficult, but I want to go ahead and get started on that. All right. So this video is mainly going to be for somebody who also has this uh, foundation wall system or perhaps interested in having this foundation wall system. For, for whatever reason, um, Superior Walls, which is the brand here you'll see, Superior Walls, this brand uh, of foundation wall, they, it comes already pre-insulated. I've talked about this before in one of my other videos. Pre-insulated with uh, two and a half inches of XPS foam, which gives you an R value of 12 and a half, uh, as well as these studs, concrete uh, studs that are insulated with an inch of EPS foam all the way around. And then the steel stud facing, so you could just uh, fasten whatever wall material you're gonna be putting on there, whether it's drywall, wood, whatever but they don't have uh, their interior corners. There's nothing framed here. So obviously if you're gonna put anything on these walls, it might be a good idea to have some sort of structure here to, uh, to mechanically fasten to. So what I've done out in my uh, other area of the basement and that I'm gonna do here is uh, just two studs kind of a uh, pocket screwed together um, in the corner here. So let's go ahead and get started on that, all right? So the first thing I actually need to do, and this is uh, more just my own fault, is just like over here. So what I did, and I explained this in one of my other videos, is I foamed down here towards the bottom, just above the floor, a couple of inches to keep any of this uh, insulation off the ground. This being my basement, having the possibility of flood. I mean, I've, I've taken some precautions to hopefully prevent that from happening, but anything's possible. So hopefully this will protect any of the actual insulation within the walls from getting from ever getting wet i'd have to flood at least a couple inches before it would even start to touch this stuff what i did here is uh was getting a little antsy and for some stupid reason i filled all this stuff in leaving some open spaces here but barely because it's foam and it expands but i need to clear some of this out now because i need to have a uh a a little two by four bottom plate on these studs that I'm gonna be making. So I'm gonna to have to cut these out so that I can actually make room and uh, make space for that to sit down in there. That's what I gotta do first. The depth of these walls uh, or these cavities is six inches, just like that. So I need to have a six inch bottom plate here for my two by four studs. And now I gotta go ahead and cut this crap out of here. This is kind of a pain to try and do uh, one-handed. I'll be right back. Okay, first one's cut out and that one's in there. That'll be, uh, I mean, right now it's just sitting in here, so I gotta attach to the stud once I get that cut. Next side. Okay, second one's done. That one's a little bit more of a pain in the butt. But as you can see, they're overlapping here, which is exactly what I have to do with the studs. This one's gonna be here, this one's gonna be here, and that's how they're gonna, I'm gonna pocket hole, uh, screw them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my studs now. I hate finding staples in this crap in the studs after the fact. Look at this, why so many staples in here? Okay, so the stud is cut to length. It's, and then I just notched it here with a, uh, with a jigsaw. And because I was cheap at the time, I didn't buy, uh, pressure treated wood, which when you're going up against concrete, it's generally a good idea uh, to use pressure treated because of the moisture content in the concrete. So I just went ahead and basically just used some flashing tape on the two sides that are going to be touching the concrete to keep it from actually touching the concrete. Now the notch in the top of the stud is because the wall has foam insulation across the its whole header but it's cut out or it's notched out within the corners, but not enough for a full three and a half inch two by four. So you gotta notch it to fit it in there. And I'll show you how that goes in. So I got the second stud done and I just wanna to touch on a few things that I didn't mention in the first one. So I'm fastening the bottom plate to the stud with just two screws uh, coming from underneath. 
And remember, just whenever you're doing anything through uh, pressure-treated wood, you need to use an outdoor rated fastener, whether it's galvanized or like a coated screw, which is what I had, just uh, use a, using coated deck screws going through there. And secondly, whenever you're doing any project, you're going to be more successful if you think and plan ahead. I screwed six uh, pocket hole screws in here, not even really specifically needing six to just kind of fit with what I thought was good. And I did that before even checking to see if I had pocket hole screws. Now I did, but I didn't even think about it ahead of time. I just assumed, hey, pocket hole screws, I've done those a hundred times before. I'll be fine. Luckily, so I screwed six and I had six screws left over from whenever I had purchased them before. So I lucked out this time, but whenever you're doing a project, plan ahead, think about everything that you're gonna need before starting, or it's just gonna take, up, take more time and just be more of a hassle. All right, let's go ahead and get this one installed. So here now you can see how these uh, go together in here. I know this is only like an inch, so it doesn't seem like this is a lot that's going to be connected up here. Uh, but once I get these screwed together, actually even right now, it's stuff doesn't really move. These, these kind of sandwich each other in here. And especially once these get screwed together, it's not coming out. It can't physically can't come out of here past the, uh, past the insulation and it gets held in there really snug and tight. And, uh, it doesn't have to be structural in any way. The wall is your structure. This is really just gonna be here to fasten uh, your wall material to. So this, I think, is going to be plenty good for what it needs to do. So that's all done. Like I said, it was gonna be a real quick video. Easy project. This thing is plenty strong. It's gonna do exactly what uh, I need it to do. One thing I, I didn't mention before was the fact that it, obviously my the two bays, whether you're going this way or this way, are different sizes. This one's smaller than this size. So one thing, if you ever find yourself doing this in the future, um, orienting these boards the way that to the bigger one, the one that's gonna be more exposed on the side that is larger. Obviously this one's smaller. I got the smallest piece here because this overlaps with this board here. So it's not a huge deal, but I thought it just made more sense to do it like this. Well, that's all I have today, guys. If you have superior walls, I hope this helped you. If not, but maybe you're planning on building in the future, check these guys out, superior walls. It's, it's a really good system. They come in in panels and they bolt and screw them together. They're installed in a day and you can immediately start building on them right away. Obviously, like I said, they're pre-insulated, they're pre-studded. So ultimately it's less work for you, less time needed in uh, the initial install. So check them out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. If you got something out of the video, please like, subscribe. I'm a pretty new channel, so every little bit's gonna help me out, big time. So. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. God bless, guys.